It's Open House Thursday on Your View. Welcome to the show. I am Mariah Afolabi Brown. As always, I have the ladies with us. How are you doing, Miriam? I'm Lungi. fine. Thank you. Thank you so very much. How are you? I'm fine. I was <laughs> fine until a few moments ago, but I'm trying to be fine. How are you doing? Okay, okay I'm fine. So on Saturday is World Pangolin Day. I know. Mother of vultures. Yes, uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> but I think that um, it's important to highlight this particular animal. It, um, it's described as the Earth's natural pest control. Mm. So these animals, just from their normal regular activities, they feed on um, insects that would otherwise be in our soil, eat up our crops. Um, they burrow through the soil, you know, to do this. And in doing that, they aerate the soil and just spread minerals, you know, that makes the soil healthy. But they are now described as the most trafficked mammals on earth. Wow. Mm. And their numbers are dwindling. And if they go extinct, we'll be in big trouble. Mm. So um, towards the um, day, which is on Saturday, I will be highlighting the pangolin, the benefits to our ecosystem, and why we need to stop trafficking in them. And as usual, the reason, one of the major reasons that they are being trafficked, because people believe in spiritual things that the they can do, all the different that. skills, what okay. they can, you know, different things. We need to look at how they were origin what they were originally made for mm. and make sure that we still have them on earth. Okay. Yeah. How are you doing? Uh, Nima Akasha Zibiri. Nima is grateful. Mm. I'm grateful. I forgot my bumper. I'm still trying to remember. <laughs> <laughs> my farm <laughs> going to keep away. <laughs> That's a very, very important thing we're doing. I used to love reading those things as a child. Yeah. Growing up, I just never thought anything. Seeing what you have achieved with the vultures, yeah, so good. raising issues. There are a lot of animals going extinct that they should. They are not in the business of going extinct just because of certain mindset around them. We are still looking for ritualists. Remember, we still really want to talk to ritualists, the real ritualists. Will they come let out? us find out what they use these vultures for, mm. what they use human parts for. Does it really work? How do, how do the gods take in these it's things? True. Like, mm. It would mm. be really nice to gods. speak to a ritualist. The human parts from the Ogun State man and his wife yes. said that he bought it to do messy. Messy drug. Messy, no, messy charm. Okay. Oh. I'm wondering what's messy charm. Messy? Like stable, to get stable. Uh, Somebody yeah. reached out to me that he can get me a ritualist, but Please, I'm trying to, I, 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 I think I lost the best ritual, contact. Can a ritualist openly come without being arrested? Well, they, you can't prove that he so has done it before. He can tell you about somebody, that. He knows that he knows. an animal, a human head is used for this. He knows that, but he will say I used it. Okay. He let us even know what it's used for. I I the the day. <laughs> <laughs> no, talk about we host that day. We are watching for New House. Why? Our producer, our producer. Uh, <laughs> you are shocking me. Uh, so you would have chest the new year. Yeah, chest. How are you doing, the bed? I'm doing yeah. amazing. So. <laughs> I was at the clubhouse yesterday. I would talk oh, yes, about you said so. spicing up your sex life. It was and explosive. <laughs> when Have we gonna watch it again? Yes, it's, 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 it's on replay. For both the other day, you, you form virgin. Now you have <laughs> I tried now. Experience. I tried. It was you that was it you? Was you, you was this Larry thing? Yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. So it has this platform on um, clubhouse oh. where we meet to discuss spiritual issues, sexual issues. M money issues, every issue, you know, as a life coach now, you can, you know, yeah. help people. And so he brings in experts in different fields. And I don't know why he keeps calling me when he reaches that sex Thanks, matter. Mother. <laughs> last year he called you too. I yeah. know it was really, really interesting so last year. What happened was when I finished my coaching, I wanted to niche on being a sex coach. Yeah. My husband said, lie, lie. Because you didn't know I'm I don't that want would. anybody to look at you and be seeing sex. <laughs> no way. Find something else, <laughs> you know. True. So but he just keeps calling me <laughs> sex relationships. And yeah. I'm a natural when it comes to that. But now I am a personal development and spiritual coach. <laughs> yeah, so I love you guys. But yeah, yeah, help. Help. She's not our hot topic. So we'll move on. How are you doing? I'm doing very you well. Down yesterday. Oh, yes. We went to the party in Italy. Yeah. It was really nice. Just go to party. In fact, the, 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 the MC was saying, I've gone to see you three parties. <laughs> I think <laughs> myself, I need to start staying in my house. <laughs> so I was kept calling my name. Within one week, I don't see for three parties. <laughs> I'm like, Lagos <laughs> woman. Um, well, I'm never I've seen in my house. Well, she called me any party. I'm not going. <laughs> All right. Fun. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you, Let's go on a quick break. When we return, we go through the front pages of the papers. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Okay, we're we'll starting with the nation. Five petrol-laden vessels 
from Belgium turned back. Ekiti governorship only drops, uh, only drops um, APGAP plan for SDP. Collapsed 21 story building in Ikoi, Lagos to prosecute four square homes. Nod for North Central to produce APC chair. <coughs> Police end the LEA rift over Abakiari deepens. <coughs> Asso strike unnecessary, says federal government. Owa Obokun backs Oyetola for APC ticket. Okay, who has the major headline? Okay, I have it across all papers, so let's quickly take it. So, our House of Reps got on top of their work yesterday and someone there, and that quarter quarter of anything. Really carry. To come and explain why there's a scarcity, and he, he first of all, um, apologized for the situation, then says that the particular terminal from where the uh, extremely high methanol fuel came from has also and they had five uh, vessels from that terminal. They've returned them, and they've also filed liquidation um, costs against um, the, okay. the producers of that um, particular uh, methanol high petrol. Mm -hmm. But that um, methanol is not exactly a contaminant of PMS. It's saying okay. that in some countries like China, they have high methanol uh, PMS that they use. Oh. But maybe for our own consumption here, our cars are not modeled to, or you know, our it. own uh, machines are not modeled to deal with highly me, uh, me, methanol, methanol <coughs> PMS. So that's what the situation is. It says that, but they have about 2.1 billion petrol coming into the country, and this is supposed to help uh, in the meantime, t carry us till March. So this situation that we are going through now will end by next week. Mm. Now, those were his words. Who, who, uh, I'm Monday next week if I don't see Frido. Mm. <laughs> I'll be calling him out. Yeah. But it says all of them, that man, Ipman, and all of the operators within are already on sites now trying to load to yeah. help us reduce. So they'll yeah. be supplying and they're working okay. on that. Yeah, issues with NATO. Like yeah. There's a lot of... Uh, Asu? Yes, so uh, the education minister, Damu Adamu, Yesterday said that he's expressing shock that ASU is going on strike because right now they are still negotiating. So he said that um, uh, they, they set up a committee to resolve the disagreements between uh, the both sides, and they were supposed to submit a report. And uh, after the report, then they will now, you know, go with the necessary steps. But he was shocked to see that even in the midst of the negotiations, ASU had, you know, taken decided to go on strike. Then he went ahead to say that they have actually paid some of these monies that they wanted. I think they paid about a hundred uh, billion to ASU. And um, he listed, um, he said that hundred billion was to address some of the union's demands and he broke it down. He said they had released 40 billion as earned allowances, which was paid in February, March 2021, 30 billion paid in October 2021 for revitalization, 22.72 billion um, mainstreamed in the, into the 2021 budget was paid in November 2021. So in all, they have given ASU 92.72 billion as of December 2020. And they are worried that even in the midst of the negotiations, ASU is just backing off. ASU, on the other hand, is accusing the minister that he's not present for the meetings. And he's saying that I'm the one that usually calls this meeting. The only time I wasn't <laughs> present was when I went to Germany to receive medical attention. But the negotiations are still on. And he's saying that right now, the way things are going is no longer the fault of the federal government since they cannot even come to an agreement. Okay. Yeah, so the story have, building? Yes, the story building. So is that there's this an update on the 21-story building collapse um, that happened. And um, the panel, towing and indeed led panel, had, you know, had finally met with the governor and presented their white paper. It was a 28, um, they gave 28 recommendations. 26 was accepted by the governor and 26, um, two rejected. Um, and among the recommendation is that um, the other buildings, the uncompleted ones, will be demolished and the land handed over and forfeited to government. And that um, because of the people who died, about 50 persons died in that collapse, the um, four, four square, that's the name of the yeah. four score homes will be prosecuted mm. for their deaths and mm. for negligence. And also culpable government officials, three town planners and civil servants will be prosecuted for lying under oath and for using a private 
consulting company to create a fake approval that the building um, was good to go. Wow. Mm. And so um, it looks like, you know, some form of, uh, they're also talking about compensation and things like that. So it looks like government is, yeah. you know, right on this, this and it's good update. Okay. Moving on now to the punch. Stations run out of petrol scarcity paralyzes states. Protesting Lagos drivers set ablaze by government agents, say family and colleagues. Bandits raid Kaduna community, abduct 22 residents. Shooting Arik Bashala loyalists, attack Oshun CP. Command denies buyer's accusation. Northern youths kick as government invade Abia cattle market and kills eight. Picture here of students of the University of Benin during a protest to support the academic staff uh, union reverses um, strike. Uh, Asu fumes as federal government declares strike illegal. Kiari may spend more days in detention as NDLE approaches court. Okay. Yes, uh, I'll take this story. So um, Nima had taken a story that was reported yesterday as a driver trying to sort of dodge enforcement officers, burn, set himself ablaze. Oh. But we are hearing another side to the story. So this is uh, a colleague of his and also a family member. They said what actually happened was um, there are these agrarians that work with these enforcement officers and they were insisting that the driver get out of the car and he refused. So they brought petrol and they threatened to pour it on him, but he didn't leave his car. And then one of them also brought a lighter, kept turning it off and on, uh, threatening oh. to set, it, you know, set him ablaze if he didn't get out of the car. He did not. And of course, where there's um, petrol and there's Hello. flame, he caused, caught he, he caught fire. There was already one of them sitting beside him. That one was able to flee. That's one of the area boys was able to That's flee true. the scene. He was badly um, oh. burned. He's in hospital now. Um, recuperating. His family member said he got a call from his conductor saying this is what had happened. He ran to the scene. He says he was now arrested by police officers because they said to him that they had he was trying to do burn down the office as per NSAS. But eventually when they needed someone to go to the hospital, they let him um, get off. So that there's nothing that this man is a normal sane man. Why would mm, he just set, set himself, himself up? Because he's still sounded. Yes, exactly. That's but um, the chairman, State Environmental and Special Forces Enforcement Uni, um, Uni CSP Shola JJ Loe, says that um, these um, people that were involved in this um, incident are not members of their agency. That they are imposters. That that's what oh. they do, and that they are investigating it to make sure. You know, everything is set. Okay, let's go on a quick break. When we come back, we continue with the review. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We're still reviewing Punch. Um, what has the story in Punch? It's, uh, so, okay. he's a, the head of his support group of the Aregbe faction in Ocean State, Razak Salinsile, Chalinsile, has um, written a petition against the Commissioner of Police of Ocean State. He wrote the petition to the Deputy Commissioner of Police, uh, alleging compromise of the CP, saying that without investigation, the CP just came out to, you know, to say that the Aregbe group started shooting mm. in the, the reported shootings in Osho State po following their, their um, own um, co Congress. And what would I call the... He had a, pre a public uh, you know, meeting with his supporters. And after that, there was shooting. And the commissioner of police then alleged that they were responsible for it. And that the NNCDC said no. They were shot at first. The back and forth tried led to um, his chairman of his own faction writing a petition against the CP alleging that, and also um, I, I am saying to the CP that because you're compromised now, your office is not supposed to be partisan, and obviously it is, you're not an employee of government you're from the federal, you should be redeployed, asking him to voluntarily redeploy. Those are the details. Okay, moving on to the Nigerian Tribune. Politics. Adulterated fuel and NPC files claimed for damages against suppliers. One minor, three commuters killed, two others injured in Plato. A Moteco arrest truck with 63 northerners motorcyclists in Ondo. Saludo makes OND minimum qualification for political appointees. Drug trafficking, Kiari Bawa confessed working directly 
with cartel in Brazil in Ethiopia, says NDLEA. Mm -hmm. uh, eight killed as government attack cattle market in Abia. And FG wants peaceful resolution with ASU, strike of Portuguese minister. So this is my new exciting governor, which I'm pretty excited, which many of us are excited about, Governor Saludo. <laughs> He's doing some saludo things. Okay. So he said he has, <laughs> he has, yeah, he, he was, he said that going forward, that the ordinary national diploma, as OND, that will be, become the minimum qualification for appointments of commissioners and other political appointees within his government. Mm -hmm. He said this in the form which was supposed to be, uh, he called it uh, the intention form, I believe, that he want to work with the government. So that he, they created a, a platform, a, a website where those who are willing to work for office go there to apply with your qualification. So if you want to be commissioner for information, commissioner for health, wow. or any, any, any position at all, you go there, you say, you know what, I have had this experience, I'm a media yeah. experience, I would like to be the commissioner for, 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 for media or whatever oh, it is, shit. and you apply with your qualifications, you <laughs> and the review, he says that, let me tell you what this, this exciting governor is doing. <laughs> he said, oh, there's someone I wanted to quote him somewhere. Um, they hope to attract problem solvers mm. with passion, competence, capacity, mm. and integrity who are interested in joining a team of other selfless public servants mm. selfless. to transform selfless. Anambra into a livable and prosperous smart mega city. Mm. Hey, mm. in fact, Lucky I think I am going to transport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> not yet, not yet. Come on, someone is still Lakers performing. Is yeah, Lagos is still doing. But I'm just saying, we're so happy to see when, when the new government just breath of fresh air. Mm. They do it so, yeah. so all, all of you that are from Ananambra and you live in Lagos and you're qualified in one day, please apply, go mm -hmm. online, check out the portal, see what you can do to serve. If you don't have to be the commissioner, you can be mm -hmm. the head DG of a, mm -hmm. of, a, of a unit, of a power state. So there's so many things you can do. Apply, because he wants fresh faces mm -hmm. and new energy. Yeah, we we'll love it, we we'll love it. So yeah. The Honorable Minority Leader of the House of Reps, Honorable Bundu de Lumelu, is probing 165 billion naira appropriated to the correctional, um, Nigeria Correctional Service for the past two years. He's saying that since the amendment of the um, Nigeria Correctional Service Act in 2019, they, uh, they upgraded. The plan of that act is to upgrade Nigeria to the same level of international correctional services mm. until date that the, the workers, the staff of that, of the Nigeria Correctional Service seems to be the poorest that they are, um, uh, what's it called? Their basic needs as staff is not good, it's not been upgraded, their uniforms are still old, they've not been prioritized, their welfare, sorry, has not been prioritized to international best practice. And he's also asking that a one billion budgetary provision for prisons, biometrics, arms, and ammunition are still not being, you know, visible. They're not seeing the result because they still carry their obsolete mm. and also substandard weapons around. You still have prison breaks happening. Right. And so they started this probe, and I wonder how mm -hmm. it will end. So, so our okay. men of the Undo State Security Network intercepted a truck in Iju, a current not local government area, with about 63 men from the northern part of the country hiding inside. So what they said that when they saw this truck coming and what they saw was um, animals and motorcycles. Mm. But when they now started conducting uh, a check, right they realized that there were about 63 men hidden in the truck. And they were wondering, why are you people hiding? So they, according to the story, said they were headed to Lagos, and they had um, over, I wanted to get the number of bikes, 10 registered Okadas with Yoruba names, and 15 unregistered Okadas, then 240 rams in the truck. Investigations are ongoing to understand why they have registered these Okadas in Yoruba names when they are not Yoruba people, and why they decided to hide in the truck. What's the sinister motive behind that influx into Lagos State. Okay. So I also like Lagos State to investigate how these people get into Lagos like State. Like owned well. by your government, right. just having uh, yeah, all, you know, all the way from the Lagos is refusing to enforce his mm. ban on Okada. Simple. Yeah. So here is the heaven, uh, heaven Anybody to make can your come money. In. Once you reach the it's economic movement. Lagos wants to enforce now, but we can, are the ones that will say they don't put a ban and they are enforcing their ban on Okada. Mm -hmm. On this table, this same table, uh, we have, we have uh, criticized the Lagos the, 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 the government right. for uh, trying to enforce this Okada ban. No, we said they should no, find an alternative for them. How, how do you find alternative for people that are flooding into Lagos you. every single no, second? But that was not this clear picture we had that they were flooding in. They said you weren't working here already. No, like every, Lagos every single day. We're going to be in Brazil State. Every single day. <laughs> thousands coming to the state every day.
Go ahead. In Plato's Sorry, school, Jerry. Help us change the subject. Irish youths have gone out to, and they said they killed um, commuters um, traveling from just to Jingir. This was supposed. This seemed like a reprisal attack on um, the killings that happened at the mining site on Tuesday in the morning around 9:45 a.m. Some hoodlums, bandits, had gone into the um, mining site and killed two miners. Mm -hmm. They got away with it. Mm -hmm. So this youth, in anger, you know, went out and what they did, you know, was sad. Three persons said died on the spot. Two uh, sustained injuries. Thankfully, um, six other passengers were rescued. Operation Safe Haven also gave the a statement to confirm this incident. And the governor has come out to categorically, um, you know, discredit this sort of behavior and that they mm. would um, investigate fully what is happening. Okay, quickly to Vanguard. This man is still not taken. Hunters arrest six Boko Haram informants, food suppliers in Borono. Uh, bandits attack a beer cattle market. Cows, traders fear dead. How we nap 63 northerners. IPOB, no immigration record of Kano's departure, says Kenya government. One month warning strike as to dodging negotiations, says federal government. Then it's three, we've not taken. Yeah, I took Abia. Yes, go ahead, the major headline. Kiari, yes, drug cartel working with DCP Kiari, not our officers. The Nigerian police have decided to respond to them saying that certain officers of the MDLE were. Um, um, friends or cooperated with Abba Kari in this crime mm. that he carried out, and they're asking the NDLA to prosecute his staff. NDLA, on the other hand, is saying none of our staff was found. But if any of them was found, you know, complicit in this, we will do everything possible to probe him. Mm. Also, they're saying that with what Kiari has said during his um, interrogation, saying that he sort of replaced said, the drugs with some dummies that they are going to start a forensic um, investigation into that to see the quali quality of the do uh, drugs recovered. But, and they've also gone to court to extend the time for his, um, his detention mm -hmm. while investigation is ongoing. And they said saying that his confession is also assisting them in what they're doing. So they'll be holding him for a longer time. He'll spend more days there while they investigate that. But if any NDLA staff is complicit in this, that okay. staff will have also so have to go you, down. I'll Sorry, Miriam, okay. quickly. Four other uh, police officers were, you know, accused yeah, along with NDLE, uh, with Kiari. Yeah. But we're only hearing Kiari's name. He's the biggest. Please, so, no, it doesn't matter. Whoever, wh whatever, and even if it's the IG, please just release information. No, no to be fair, the names, the other names have been mentioned. mentioned in the papers. But you know what bothers me about the police stance concerning this story is that from the very beginning, they kept saying, oh, NDLEA staff to are involved is not a tit for tat. Yes. Mm. A, uh, an investigation is going on. This is for everybody. And if there are NDLEA staff involved, Get they will out. be prosecuted as well. But don't yeah. make it look like, oh, you are doing enough. Mm. You do, you do, you do. It does not yeah. make sense. Mm. True. That's all, that's all. Okay. <laughs> that's all we can take on front page view. When we come back, it's Thursday. We have very, very interesting, you know, disturbing stories. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So this morning we're discussing leadership, recipe for leadership, you know. So we've been talking about, there's a series going on with recipe. Last week we did recipe for love. This week we're talking very briefly <coughs> about the recipe for leadership, mm -hmm. you know. Um, everybody believes that they know what a leader should be or who a leader should be. Everybody has a definition for who a leader is. But what are those various recipes that we desire? What are those the recipes we think our leaders should have? And that's <clears> going to be our, 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 our brief conversation today on the recipes for leadership. Mara, would you like to start? Oh, yes. So when we talk about recipe, we are talking about ingredients, right? Yes. Yeah. So for me, I put it this way. So we, um, a leader has to have uh, a tablespoon of, no, a spoonful of selflessness. Mm -hmm. And I took that from the last story you took about the governor of Anambra State, where mm -hmm. he said that selfless people should come, you know, and... Um, offer their services. You have to be selfless. You know that you're coming to serve people. Sometimes these 
being a leader can be a thankless job, but you understand that you're doing it for the bigger picture, for the interest of everyone else. So you'll be able to, you have to be able to put yourself aside for that. Um, you should be able to have a, an inch of innovation. Mm. Again, the, the, the governor yeah. in question, yeah. this is an innovative idea. Yeah. You have to come up with fresh ideas, new ways mm. of doing things better. Um, an ounce of ownership. Mm. When things go right, when things go wrong, you should be able to own it. Mm. Um, the box stops at your table. That conversation of is the is the what do we hear every time? Is the special special cabal? Is the these people oh, that yeah, yeah, yeah. no? It is me. I was supposed it's to be corruption in charge fighting of back. This. Yes, mm. it, it's, I was. I'm the one. You know, everything stops at my table, and I take ownership and I take responsibility for what happens. Okay. So I think. How so many have you given us now? I think I've given you three. three. Okay, so yes. Nima, do three also. <laughs> It was fine three. <laughs> or how many you have? Actually, I was talking to my daughter about leadership because they picked prefects from primary four and they did not pick her. And so she came and said, ah, Mommy, do you think I'm not qualified to be a prefect? And I said, Okay, a lot of things I see that you do just with your brother. So it is everybody's goal to share the success. Share it. As a leader, if you do things together, it doesn't matter that you do all. Just that your brother was standing and saying, well done, well done, well done. It's both of you who do it. So don't deny the person their credit when you do something together or when you're supposed to work in, in, as a team. It is leadership to be able to say, as a team, we did this together and give people their credit. It doesn't di diminish mm. what your contribution yeah. was mm. at all. It's also leadership on the part of that follower to recognize what you led them to be able to achieve. Yeah. So even if they don't say, don't force it. Do your part. So I, I've been, I'm going to have to mentor her in I leadership. That that's that's, 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 that's a nice recipe. Awesome. Awesome. Then that's I also nice told recipe. her. Yeah. So I told her also. It's a nice recipe. It's a recipe. Yeah. 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 Mm. So I planning. planning. And I told her, I said, if you're a Muslim, you're someone who must learn by your way of life to live by a schedule. Because as a Muslim, you have five daily prayers that you know already are on the schedule. And so you learn as your way of life. When you grow as an adult, it will be easy for you to always keep to schedule and remember your words when you give them. So that's one of the recipe a leader must have. Mm. When you give your word, you cannot just relax and say, Oh, I got carried away with other things because you know you would be made to remember naturally. So I kept trying to explain, so I said, I said that's why I can sleep over time. Mm. I want to oversleep, but I can't, because I'm naturally wired that way, growing up the way I was mm. raised. So, you know, and I'm trying Discipline. to use that to continue to teach her. So those are the two recipes that I have. <laughs> okay, all right. Your and so what are your own recipes? <laughs> you have capped so like me, hundreds. Let, oh, please, <laughs> calm down. So uh, let me borrow from Miriam's uh, ingredients yeah. that she mentioned. So I would say a leader should have one and a half cups mm -hmm. of integrity okay mm. what you say is what you do yes. what you do is what you say yes. you should not be caught saying something else and doing something else mm -hmm. a Medical leader abode. must stand out yes. in terms of your word being your bond yes. very important uh the second recipe it's uh, two cups of walking the talk so we do a lot of talking in this part of the world <laughs> But when it comes to action, we mm. are lacking. We are absent. So a leader should, as far as I'm concerned, even learn to talk less and do more. Let mm. your actions show. Duba Marwa. Yeah, yeah, model. When you're telling somebody. You're already having leaders. Who, yeah. They are seeing model the, it. Seeing. Do the work. Do more of but the work. And you must be proactive. A leader is solution-oriented. You are not waiting for something to happen and then you start blaming mm. and start thinking, oh, it wasn't me or it's somebody else. You should take responsibility. Yeah. Now, the last recipe I have, mm -hmm. a leader must learn how to organize and harness other people's potentials. Yes. You don't necessarily have to be the one to do the work, but you must be able to identify talent and use them to the best of their ability. There's a leader, um, I, um, there's a quote I saw recently when I was doing something on leadership, and it says, 
you can achieve anything as long as you're not bothered about who gets the credit. Mm. Mariah is one example of a leader. Okay. Mariah knows how to pinch me and I am jumping on this seat. <laughs> she knows how to whine Miriam and Miriam is speaking English. She knows how to get Nima to almost remove her hijab on the show. She knows our gifts, our talents, where yeah. we function best and she pushes us and she doesn't mind who gets the credit. And she does it silently. A leader <laughs> must not mind who gets Aww. the credit. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you bless you. Oh okay. okay. So recipe. I have three recipes. Okay. So you can see started with three. Number one, daring. Mm. Especially in Nigeria, you must be daring to challenge the status quo. Yeah. Things that we have. Oh, this is the constitution. Oh, this is how we've been doing it. Mm. This. How, uh, 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 uh. You must be very, very daring. So, you know, I'm going to challenge the constitution. I'm going to mm. challenge the status quo. Mm. I'm going to say this is how we've been doing it, but we're going to choose to do it this way. Differently. So you must be daring in this country. If you're not daring, you're not going to get anywhere in this country. Number two. You must be vulnerable. I think mm. you said it in different ways. Yeah. Well, you see, I, I, Governor Sawalu tried to do it a few times where he went to ap appeal. Mm. When you do wrong, I, 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 I accept it and acknowledge mm. it. When you also do well, we'll celebrate you, but be vulnerable. When you goof, accept your goof. Mm. This yeah. one, no, I goofed. Mm. And, 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 and own it, just mm. like Kamaram said earlier. And then you need a strong heart. Hmm. One red major recipe, if your heart no strong, so don't try leadership in Nigeria. Mm. You must be strong and say that there are things that you just have to be very, very strong about. And don't look left, don't look right. Know that you are taking us on a journey. Oh, mm. It might be painful, mm -hmm. but it is a journey that we must pass through. Yeah. And just like she said, don't walk the talk. So yeah. if you are taking on this journey and we see that you see, you see, you're also only drinking, drinking Gary, mm -hmm. we'll drink Gary with you. Yes. Yes. Or don't go and be eating uh, bacon chicken. and chicken and, and ask us if you're drinking Gary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So please always try to. So that's. Um, so my recipe for Four recipes. And we're done. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> no, amazing <laughs> soup. Amazing <laughs> soup. <laughs> with, with this <laughs> nice soup, <laughs> trust me, <laughs> Nigeria <laughs> will be a better, better country to nice. eat. Yes. Let's <laughs> go on a better. break. When we come back, we'll talk about a real story for Thursday. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thanks for, thanks for staying with us. So there's a story that um, we, 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 we got wind about and was interesting because it concerns the issue of surrogacy and legal battle between, as a family, it's a domestic issue. And we're going to be bringing in our guest, who is a lawyer, a family lawyer, family uh, fertility expert, actually, to help us understand how these things go. And also, we're going to bring in the owner of the story herself to share her angle. We try to also reach... Other parties we've not been able to. We're hoping that this will be the start of the conversation mm -hmm. and going forward, we'll be able to get mm -hmm. other parties involved. But the story goes as follows. A young lady, according to her, said that her aunt approached her to have children for her um, as a surrogate mother. Now, according to her, her aunt has had children before in the past. And these mm -hmm. children are already grown up and they've traveled abroad, they live outside the country, and they're doing okay. But now her, her auntie has remarried to a new husband, and they're yet to have children. So her aunt approached her and asked her to be, to be a surrogate mother for her. And she, she accepted on the condition that she'll take care of her, get her a visa, and take her abroad for <coughs> nursing, which is something she's always wanted to do. So according to this young lady, at the point when she had the baby, and then it became twins, a set of twins, hmm. when, she, she now, when, when it was now time for her aunt, according to her, to do the right thing by her, by ensuring she gets her a visa and gets her to abroad, the lady, for some reason, declined. We don't know why that happened, but we're still trying to reach the aunts to find out her own side of the story. But from this young lady, she says now that her aunt is trying to forcefully take the children from her, and she's refusing to let go of the children because she has not adhered to our own side of the deal. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, there is no contract. document or contract for us. Mm -hmm. So it's, a, it's still a he said, she said conversation. But... It's an interesting story because the culture of surrogacy is just growing in this mm. part of the world. Less and it's time for us to talk about this so that we bring all the factors to the table. So going forward, when you want to do it, have a surrogate mother, you know all the various factors to consider. Mm. But we're going to be bringing our guest in right mm. now to help us understand how surrogacy is put together. I think we have um, Dr. Fatai Ajayi, who's going to be shedding light on, in the case of surrogacy, what are the various steps that are necessary, especially if you're using the donor's eggs. So the person who's carrying the baby is offering her eggs. In this case, I thought that the lady in question, the auntie, was going to be giving her egg to the 
to the niece. Mm -hmm. But then I'm here, I'm, I'm, when I read the story, it seems based on her article, and I'm hoping we can speak to her soon, she can help us confirm that the baby's eggs, the eggs are yes. actually hers, mm -hmm. with her auntie's husband's um, sperm to now make the baby. So we'll, we'll see. Let, well, let's welcome our doctor with us. Good morning, sir. Are you there? Good, good morning. I'm here. Thank you very much for having me. Good, good uh, to have. And, um, good to have very, you, sir. Very interesting one. Yes. yes. And, it, uh, well, uh, first and foremost, I think it's really nice to just define what uh, surrogacy is. Yes. Yeah? And uh, what it entails basically is getting somebody else to carry a baby for you for nine months. Yes. The other name for it is a gestational carrier. Okay? okay, and uh, the way we do it now, I mean, there's a traditional way of doing it where <laughs> what happens is that you just beg someone to carry a child for you. They you know, may be using their own eggs, maybe using donor sperm and all that. But nowadays, what we usually do is um, um, get maybe get either the wife's um, eggs or the husband, the wife's eggs or donor eggs, and then get the husband's sperm. Both of them are fertilized in a lab, and after fertilization, they are transferred into the surrogate. But before that happened, I mean, one would have at least ensured that the surrogate is even fit to carry pregnancy. And then, then because there would have been legal papers, you know, drafted between both parties in order to avoid uh, situations like this. Uh, where, but, but even where there are legal papers, sometimes you know there may be disputes. So it's always good to, um, you know, make sure that all the uh, legal things are you know tied up before going into uh, a surrogacy agreement. And then I mean, agreeing to carry a pregnancy for nine months because anything can happen. Anything can happen, and it's not even uh, at delivery. But mm -hmm. it will happen during the tender period. Could she, I mean, she, she could have anything that would require uh, medical attention and uh, things like that. So, mm. I mean, it's, it's, it would be, it would be a foolish person who would decide to go into surrogacy, I mean, without having all the legal ends tied up. Right. Okay, Dr. Ajayi, yeah. um, I'm interested in surrogacy. And um, I think yes. we've had that conversation. And when you told me the amount, okay. I'm still rethinking it. Should I go ahead or not? <laughs> but um, when I spoke to you about it, you explained to me that there's a way that it can be handled where I don't necessarily have to meet the surrogate mother. The hospital will handle yes. everything. Now, the fear with this yes. Yes. Uh, sort of issue that we have on the table this morning is this is a new industry. Yes. This is something we're just beginning to accept yes. as Africans. And I'm worried that we may mess yes. it up if we start with this sort of fight. So what is uh, the best method you would <clears throat> advise somebody who wants to go into surrogacy? Should you get somebody you know? Should you get your family no. member to carry for you? Or do you go that route we actually talked about, which is safest? Yeah, I think this, the safest one will be where you are anonymous and where the surrogate to is anonymous. That way there will be no, uh, no risk of uh, blackmail. You know, because if somebody knows you are this person and and and, and, and he knows and, he, and she knows that she can, you know, go on social media and start calling your name and saying she did this and that for you, um, it will actually put you at uh, immense risk. So it's always better to go anonymous. There are agencies now, you know, within the country. I'm, I'm, I, I, in, in Lagos alone, I know about ten different agencies that offer surrogacy services. And as part of their services, they also offer, offer legal counsel. So, I mean, by the time you come in, um, you are going to just, you're not, you're not only going to meet with the agent, you're also going to meet with lawyers who will draft, you know, something like, a, like, like an agreement between you and the agency on one hand and between you and the surrogate on the other so that all parties are protected. It wouldn't be at the time we are delivering that we will now find out that ah, the surrogate is not willing to give, to, 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 to give up the the features because she thinks she should get some more from you because you are the chairman of uh, Intercontinental Bank or some you know, things like that. Yeah, so but, it's always yeah. better to be anonymous. Yeah. Okay. Dr. Ajayi, let me get a few questions. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> in case, you know, because we don't, you cannot say that there have never been disputes. In case a dispute Hello? arises, yeah. like... Uh, are you hearing? Yeah. So in case a dispute yeah, arises, like in the case we have now, 
The yeah. what I see here is somebody turning the children to an object like a chattel that yeah. negotiates with. What is the um, recourse? What happens when the children become an object between both parties? That's the surrogate mother and the mother, for instance. I believe that you know, the law will take those children away from both parties. What, what have you seen in your experience in this? Well, we have been lucky so far, and uh, disputes like this hardly ever arise, you know? But when they, I mean, if, when, whenever disputes like this arise, the surrogate actually has, a, you know, a better legal standing. Because in, in actual fact, the legal parents, when, when we talk about surrogacy, is the person that carries that pregnancy to term, irrespective of who, who donated the eggs or the, or the sperm. The person that carries that, uh, the, the, that carries the baby up to nine months is actually his legal parent. But what they do as part of the agreement is that they, 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 they sign away every parental obligation so as to avoid, I mean, so, 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 so as to avoid things like this. As long as babies are born sometimes, we separate the uh, surrogate and the baby, and then we, we take the baby and we hand them over to the intending parents while the surrogate is kept somewhere else so as to avoid bonding and a lot of other things. But in, in actual fact, what the law, what, I mean, the law, if I'm going to follow law, I, I'm not a lawyer, but from the right. little I know about law, the law, the person who carries the, 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 the pregnancy to term right. is actually okay. the, uh, the, the, the legal right. parent. Right. So, what, so what the parent will do, I mean, if we're going to follow the law um, to, the, to the letter, is that they adopt the baby. Even though the baby is there to, to start with, but I mean, they will need to perfect papers so as to avoid uh, problems in the future. Okay. As you've mentioned, you're not a lawyer, but because you deal with <laughs> surrogacy, I feel you may help us in this particular situation. So we have a situation. <laughs> no legal agreements yeah. have been drawn. And here yes. we are. What would be the so, best uh, what would be the best way now? To solve, you know, sort this out amicably, especially now that we understand that that mother is the legal parent of the twins. So, what? How are they going to sort this out? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. So the the best thing will be for them to settle, you not know, between themselves. I don't know what was promised and uh, what has been given so far. I'm, I'm, I'm not I'm, I'm not a witness to any of those things. But if they can't reach an agreement, they will need to go to court, and that, that's family court. And in the family court, what the judge will rule on is probably, you know, what would be in the best interest of the of the child, you know. So by the time they look at all the factors and everything that came into play before the babies were born, I'm sure um, we'll be able to arrive at a conclusion that will be, be acceptable to both parties. All right, we're going to go. I mean, they, gonna... they are really. And, right. and they, they should be able to, you know, talk to themselves. I mean, we're so Nigerian we're going to go on a break, Dr. Jai. There are a few factors we are yet to talk about. Because this girl, according to her, yeah. she feels that she's being taken advantage of because she's poor. Yeah. And there's a part that yeah. if, we, if we say the legal angle in the best interest of the child, the court might say the rich folks no. <laughs> are, are more <laughs> able to take care of this child. So there is that, there is that back and forth. But when we come back, we'll try to in, um, in, invite our lawyer <laughs> to join this conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Six minutes. Thanks for staying with us. So we've been trying for the past few minutes to get um, the lady in question. Her name is Gift Solomon. She's the one she's willing to tell her story. We tried to get her on Zoom, but we've been having some technical issues. We should get her on in a few more minutes. We're also going to be speaking with the legal practitioner, Mrs. Olajumoke Fashion Laura. She's also going to shed more light on the options available. But whilst we're trying to get um, that connection together, let me, hear, let, let me try to um, reiterate the story for those who are just joining us. So this is a young lady who, according to her, she believes that she's been oppressed by her rich aunt and uncle who have uh, engaged her as a surrogate for their children. Now, the, the, the naughty part of this issue is the fact that she used her own eggs. Now, what is, what is um, usually legally recognized is where you get donor eggs mm -hmm. from somewhere. You pay and for donor, donor eggs, and then the sperm comes in, and then you 
you, the surrogate mother. But in this case, some may argue that this girl was, that um, this, this matter was not clearly explained to mm. her. She's an innocent girl who's not very exposed. And she's like, okay, I want to help my auntie. I'm just, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not trying to um, defend her. But the idea is to, someone like that in a position doesn't have the exposure. And she's trying, she feels like she's helping her auntie. Her auntie, who may know better, use her auntie, her niece's eggs. And then now the baby is, is fertile. You did not adhere to your Fulfill promise. Fulfill your promise. Mm -hmm. Now, where does, where, where does the law back the child, the, the mother of the child, up. Who, who, who is the law going to back up in this? And that's why we really need to speak to the legal practitioner. I'm told that she's on now. Well, Mrs. Olajumoke, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Oh, is Great. this Gift? This is Gift Solomon. Yes. Oh, thanks for joining us. I guess we couldn't get you on Zoom, so we'll speak um, to you via the phone. So in a nutshell, let me give you an opportunity to tell us in a few minutes your story before mm -hmm. we then get the other um, experts involved. Okay, okay. Um, my name is Keith Solomon. So, I, this whole thing started in 2016. It was in 2016 when my auntie and the husband, they have a polytechnic in Anambra. So, they were given a mass admission. It was actually a scholarship. So, they were given to people, uh, friends, and relatives. And if you're interested, you can come to the school and you just pay for, you just register and you start you can come with if you are if you have a jam or no jam they just accept people so when she called my mom and told her about it so my mom said okay she has people that want to go to school so my mom told me i said okay that would be a great opportunity because me too i want to go to school so i traveled to anambra state and we started in 2016. so the plan was that it was actually nothing that i wanted to do and they were enrolling students from all every course like Whatever course you want to do, they'll say you they do it, you pay and you start. So at some point they told us that we are going to stay for two years, that we are going to do a general course for two years, after which they will be separated to our different departments. So we did the first two years and they were always telling us that we are going for IT abroad after the two years. And considering the fact that she was my auntie, she promised me personally that she was going to support me to go to a nursing school abroad after the two years. So we continued. After two years, it was time for us to do our IT. So this time now, she now said that I can no longer travel because that I need to have her change in computer science. I cannot travel to the U.S. without having at least her change in computer science. So I was angry. I said this was not the initial agreement. So actually, I wanted to stop schooling. So when they now came back, so she called me one day and told me she wants someone that can carry a baby for her, that she will send the person and that she said once the person is pregnant, she will send the person abroad. Then once the person gives birth to the child, that she will step through the person. So if I have a connection, I said no, I don't have such connection. So I went home. The next day I came back and I told her, okay, since you've already promised to help me go to a nursing school, what if I do this for you, at least if you're doing this for me, so that at least it will trigger you to actually fulfill your promise to me. Since I see other girls that are pregnant, so I feel it's something I can do. So she was happy and said, okay, um, if I can do that for her, I should be rest assured that my future is secure, that she will train me to any, any level, that she has the connection and power to take me to any level I want. So I said, okay, no problem. So now we are in 2018. So the reason why I agreed then was because I know that I don't want to be, do this computer h and stuff. And I was thinking once I agree to do this, that she will start doing the paperwork so that we can do this and I travel do it for them, then continue with my life and do my nursing. So after now, we're in 218, they delayed it to all of the 218, all the 219. She kept saying, and even though I want to do it for her, but I still cannot travel to US without ha having my h and so now in 2020, they came back during Christmas period, and she told me, I hope I remember what I promised her. So because I've already given my promise, and now I'm in a relationship, I've already promised her that I'll do this. But right now, I don't know how it's going to look. And then if I say no, it's going to create immunity and problem, or she will start feeling somehow. So I didn't want her to feel bad. So I said, okay, no problem. Since I've promised you, I'll go ahead and do it. So in January, we went to the hospital, 
Olive Branch Clinic in Lakey. So they did the whole test. They checked my reproductive system and everything. Everything was good. And they said it will continue once I once it's time for my next period that I should come. So when it was time, I went to Lagos and they gave me an uh, ovulation booster I took for one week and all of that. So on the date, I think it was on the fifth on the fifth of February. No, on the fourth of February, they transferred. They did an extraction. They extracted the eggs for the whole process. And the day of extraction, I was told not to wear makeup. I should not eat, I should not wear jewelry for anything because of the injection they'll be giving to me and all of that. So before then, my auntie already wore, they gave us a lab coat and a theater gown, the one I'll be wearing, and the one my auntie will be wearing to join me in the theater. So she already wore that theater gown and took a picture, asked me to take a picture of her lying on the bed to make it look like as if she's the one that is going to undergo the whole surgery and everything. So I, did, I didn't have anything in mind. So I did all of that. And after the end of the day, they extracted the eggs and went home. So they said the next two days that we are coming back for the transfer. So then when we get home, the husband was saying they should transfer five eggs. It was like a joke. So when we got to the hospital the next day, before then, they've been having meetings, the whole process, they've been discussing with the doctor. They never discussed, the doctor never called me to tell me how all of this whole thing works because I already told the doctor that she's like a mother to me and that she's a nurse, that she explained the whole thing to me so that he don't need to worry about telling me the whole process, that she can do that. But then she didn't explain anything to me, so we did everything. So after the transfer, we went back. Then on the 20th of um, in February, I was confirmed pregnant, so everything started there. The initial agreement is once you're pregnant, you'll be sent abroad. So now... I said, okay, what next? Now I'm pregnant, what next? She said then that the hospital said that they want me to have to take care of me to the next three months. In that case, I have to be here in Nigeria to the next three months. Before then, she's already told the doctor because she told me that, that she told the doctor they are going to process papers for me to travel. So now I'm pregnant and I have to stay for the next three months. So during this three months, period of three months, at some point, I got really, 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 really sick. And really sick that from morning to night, sometimes I don't even eat. Whatever I eat, I throw up. I was depressed and all, the, all that because she told me not to tell anybody about it. So the secret between me, her, and the husband. So I didn't let any other person know about it. So now I'm sick. And at some point, I told her, please, all right, can gift. you please tell my mom? I hate to pause you because because of time. I want to. So now you're pregnant. You got pregnant, and then at what point? Um, at what point did you deliver? And at what point did you refuse to give them the baby as promised? At what point did I deliver? At what point did you give birth? And at what point did you refuse to give them the baby as promised? Okay. The the reason why I am giving birth right now. So the reason why I refuse to give them the baby and everything is because. Initially, when I was having issues, I told her I needed to tell someone about it so that they know what I'm going to because I was going to a lot. She refused. Even the doctor asked her, did you inform the parents about what you're doing? She said no. So the doctor wants for you to do a thing like this without telling the parents of the child what she's going to. Then the doctor asked her, what is your plan for her? Then she said she's traveling abroad. She said that all her efforts to send me abroad is not working. So the doctor asked her, did you at least apply for a visa for her? She said no. Meanwhile, they've been trying to work a way out that I can travel with only my passport and my NIN. But it didn't work because for countries they were trying to get, they requested for transit visa and all of that. But she said she wanted to erase every trip that I did this for her. In that case, she was just wanting an easy access for me to travel out of the country. So all of this whole thing didn't work. And then the maltreatment, the way she started treating me while I was, I was pregnant and everything. So before she traveled, I was three months before she traveled back. At some point, she abandoned me. Although the husband told me initially that the wife don't have any concrete plans to take me to anywhere, that she's just concerned about me and the baby, that she may likely abandon me. So that whenever she's traveling, that I should not allow her travel. But the thing is, I've been going through a lot, and I don't really want to stay around her anymore. So even if she's traveling and don't want to go with me, no problem. So I was, I was really, really sick at this point. So when I 
when she traveled, when the day she was traveling, she gave yes, let me pause you for a second. I want to pause you for a second. Mariam has a question yeah. for you. Go ahead. Um, the period you were pregnant, um, for your antenatal and everything, who paid for that? Who cared for you? I can't really. I can't really. Okay. Hello. For your antenatal um, um, classes and things like that, who paid for it? How did you get to hospital and back? Where did you stay? Did you stay by in your own parents' house or did you stay with them? How was your okay. feeding and your medicine and your medical, everything up until you got, um, you gave birth? Okay, like the surrogate process, they paid for everything. So when she was leaving, she didn't register me to, she only took me because I was sick and I was admitted in Lagoon Hospital. So after then, when I went for a one week checkup, I noticed that I was not registered for antenatal. So they said before I see a doctor that I must register for the antenatal package. So from the money she gave me, I registered for the antenatal package. And from the money she gave me was for hospital bills and my feeding. Then to, I didn't have any because I was, by this time I was, I was getting bigger on my breast. So I had to buy the undies I used and the, the gowns I used for pregnancy and all of that. So it was from the money she gave me that I used to buy all of that. And they rented, they rented um, I, I was in a hotel, actually. They kept me in a hotel, and she traveled. So they did, they did, they did take a gift to you. Can you say the sum total of what they gave to you? Hello? How much exactly did they give to you? Yes, she gave me 400,000 naira. From so the beginning I, to the end? Ma? From the beginning to the end of the pregnancy, only 400,000 naira. From the, it was not from it was on the on when I was when she was traveling that was when she gave, me, she okay, gave me so a she hundred thousand naira. Right. Then at it. some point when I told her then I've already traveled because I was angry when my money finished and I was explaining to her she said and I'm a, I'm average Nigeria and I'm not supposed to be spending money or requesting for money like that so she sent me another two hundred thousand. That's okay. six hundred. Okay. That so, was when I was at twenty weeks. 20 weeks. Okay, so she, she, they, they, they ensured that you were in a hotel and they somewhat gave you money, 600000 So they did take care of you uh, somewhat during that period. But as my question, you haven't answered my question. When you okay. finally delivered, yes. why did you refuse to hand over the babies to them? Not abroad. Okay, by this time, I've gotten to know the type of person they are. Like from the husband and from the children, I realized that she's not really what she painted herself to be. She's not the kind of mother that I can release my children to. Mm -hmm. Considering the fact that she already tried doing anything, they were, they were threatening my life, that they are an, an American citizens, and that the American embassy will be coming to take their children, that, uh, that my parents want to use this and extort them, that because we are poor, and they see this as an avenue to extort them, and the child actually, and before then, they were constantly abusing me emotionally because they stay in the same room, we stay together, and they have sex in, in my presence and all of that. Right. The child told me of the way she maltreats them, okay. and the way she abandoned them. Are your them parents and all asking them for anything while you were pregnant? Did your, parents, did your parents reach out to them to ask for anything? And did they give them anything, any money or anything while you were pregnant? While I was pregnant, my parents never knew about it. It was at some point she told my mom. Did they give she them anything? Did they give them money? Did your parents ask for money, anything from her? My parents didn't ask her for anything. My mom did not ask her for anything. All right. Let me pause your gifts. Let me come to the lawyer. Nobody. Do I, let, let me let you finish that sentence. What did you say? I said my parents didn't ask her, like my mom, I know, did not ask her, but at some point, I think she, she was cutting with my dad, but I don't really know their discussion. But my mom that was saying we didn't ask her for anything. Okay. All right, let me come to the lawyer. Thank you very much, Gis. Just hold in there. We might come back to you. Let me come to the lawyer. We have Mrs. Olaji Moke Fashion Loro. She's a legal practitioner who is very versatile in this area. Good morning, madam. Are you there? I'm here. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for listening in. Good so, morning. You've heard everything Gift said. There's so much she said there. Um, to the layman's um, perspective, they, someone could say both sides have, an, have, an, have a question to answer. So there is an agreement between a niece and an aunt concerning this matter. Mm -hmm. There's no legal document, as we're aware. But it is clear that from intention, um, this young lady knew she was carrying these babies for somebody. Mm -hmm. And these people also did their best to take care of her and ensure she was well she was put in a place for the baby. So what, do you think she's morally right 
to refuse to hand over the babies to these people because of how she was treated, quote unquote? Okay, good morning again. Well, um, I didn't get the part of um, the, when you say curry, I, I, I didn't get that part of like, is it a egg or our egg or someone else's egg? So I need to her know egg. that. Okay. Because her if you're talking about surrogacy, surrogacy. Yeah. Want, let me let me, her, let, me, oh, let, me well, wait, okay, let me let so. let me let Git answer that question herself. Git, are you still there? Yes. yes Were I'm they here. your eggs or somebody else's eggs? It was my egg. Your own eggs, thank you. So yes. Madam Jumake, yes. go ahead. Okay, good. Okay, so then the second question will be did did they have a valid um document? Mba. No, they saying, didn't. okay, these are going to be the terms and condition of this transaction. Mba. Did no. they have anything like none. that? None, I mean, none, none. That governed whatever happened between the parties? No, no they did not. Hello? No, no. they did not. No. Okay, so they didn't. Okay, so at best, at best, oh, yeah. what they can have here is um, co-parenting between herself and the owner of the sperm, as it were. Okay. Oh, because if she's man. saying, really, if, I mean, realistically, these kids are babies. Okay. They are babies. They are babies. So the best that can happen here is co-parenting. And um, you have to understand that at, um, at um, during gestation, that's the pregnancy time, you would know that the babies, or the baby, as it were, would have form that there is a bond that is formed between a mother and child. Mm -hmm. So for you to even, for a mother to say, I want to give this child away, there has to be some, there has to be um, an incentive, there has to be motivation, there has to be, um, there has Payment. to be um, a reason, mm -hmm. yes, a, a, like a superior reason mm -hmm. that would, that would convince you to be like, okay, I want to give up my babies. But yeah. she, she doesn't have that conviction. That's and awesome. again, we need to know mm -hmm. that the welfare of the babies is very paramount. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If she feels, as a mother, if she has a maternal instinct, and she feels like these babies will not fare well, With whoever them. she's taking them to, mm -hmm. she needs to be listened to. Wow. Mm -hmm. And yeah, if she that. says she has been on, on, unfairly treated during the cost of pregnancy, I didn't get all the facts. Right. But, well, the little I got, if you can say, if she's saying she wasn't treated well, then it means she doesn't trust her babies to be with this kind of people or that kind of person, as it were. So, I mean, and again, okay. because they did not have a valid document, mm. they didn't have a valid document, and I think that makes it uh, very easy. Yeah. Let yeah. her have her babies okay. and okay, let's let see. And again, in all we have said, she got a total sum of one million naira. Are you going to say six hundred thousand? Do you want that? Six hundred. I think I heard another four hundred. Four hundred and two hundred. Oh, in all. Yes, yeah, six hundred for one oh, full no. nine months. No, for you can't two bills. Mean, no, you. you know, I mean, that, that, it's not even questionable. Hmm. It's not even questionable, realistically. It's yeah. not questionable. Okay, let me pause I mean, you for a second. No Nima I, has I, a I do not, let, me, let me pause you because I have a lot of questions. In right. this case now where she's saying because she wasn't well treated and she wasn't well paid, she's not having any other motivation for not giving up the children except payment. Does she still have a right to have the children just no. for payment? No. She, she, said she, wasn't, she said she wasn't well treated. And that's yes. something to look at. If she, mm. had, if she wasn't well treated, what makes us think that the babies would be children, better yeah. treated? Mm. If well, you let's understand assume what I'm that what we're so, discussing here is lack of payment. We cannot assume. We, no, we shouldn't I'm, assume. I'm we shouldn't assume. Well, even if, you think, if she's basing, if she's basing her, her reluctance to release her baby, on on Amen. the point of not being well paid, well, that's not um, that's questionable. But it's still a, it, it is still a valid reason. It is it is questionable, really but it does reason. not invalidate the fact that she feels like well, these guys cannot didn't give me enough money, and I don't think they will take care of my child. Mm. Right. Maybe it is okay. Remember, I'm... I said it is questionable, but it does not invalidate. I still have the doctor. She feels like they are not. Right. I still have the doctor. I still have the doctor on. We'll come to you, Dr. Ajay, in a moment. Let me come to you. Okay, madam, uh, I want to ask if she has a fighting chance in court. You know how we are in this part of the world where 
uh, the person who has the money will be the first person oh, to oh, take it. Yeah, so even, if, no, 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 no. Even the law, the law, the law, the law, the law um, um, favors a mother to keep her kids. Mm -hmm. The only reason why, the reasons why a court would not give custody to a child will be like if the woman is of questionable character, if mm -hmm. she has shown that she's not mentally okay to mm -hmm. take care of a child. Um, she's not okay to take care of her child. She's 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 not stable. But if she's found to be stable, if she's found to to if she's able to provide um, um, a conducive conducive environment for the children, yes. For a woman that that took her child, for a woman that took her child through nine months, she didn't hurt herself. She didn't hurt the babies when they were born. Right. Well, I can. Establish that she's stable enough. Okay. Yes. Yeah. She's stable enough, and she if if it's fighting now, meaning it means she like she loves her children and right. she wants to keep them. Right. So okay. I mean, she has let me pause you for a chance. second. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Also, my question will be. We, we are now aware, at least based on what Gifts has told us, that the eggs are hers. They are not the woman's eggs. Could it, come, it can come up in court to say that maybe the woman does not feel any way related it's to these so children and feels no maternal instinct in making sure that those children end up with her. After all, they were not her eggs. She didn't hear me. Did you get that? Well, hello? Yes. That they can hello. Be, no. Okay, don't. Oh, oh. Hello? It's like, yes, can you hear us? Madam, can you hear us? Uh, is, is the question doctor? Yeah. to me or the doctor? Okay, let me come. Let's take the doctor. Let's question to the doctor. Dr. Okay. Ajayi. Yes, I'm here. Please, go ahead. We don't want to answer Mariam's question, please. I didn't, I didn't hear what she said. So okay, I'm I saying was that. trying to listen. Okay, okay go okay, ahead. Okay, I just said the eggs are the surrogate's eggs. The carrier's eggs. They're not the um, the other woman in question. They're not her eggs. So she may not feel any maternal instinct towards those children. She's not biologically their mother, and um, that's why she may not she may not find it um, you know conducive or convenient to make sure that um, gift gets fully mm -hmm. compensated because it would not mean her losing her children anyway. Not her children. They're not her children. Okay, let, 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 let me start by saying that uh, what, uh, what, 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 what has been done so far is not ethical. And it's mm -hmm. actually something that we, as fertility experts, would uh, not really want to do, you know? I mean, I, I wouldn't, for example, uh, make my donor my surrogate, because there's always that chance mm -hmm. that, you know, the level of bonding would be much higher than um, if she were getting donor eggs and donor sperms, you know, fertilized. So, I mean, for us, I mean, it, it's not something oh. I would have done. I mean, I, I, I don't know where she had the procedure done and all that, but it's really not, for me, that's not the way to go. But having said that, hmm, um, not carrying a baby biologically does not mean that one cannot develop maternal instincts or maternal bonding. That, 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 that's not true. I mean, if, if I mean, we, we have people that have few both donor friends and donor eggs and carry pregnancies till time and love those babies like they, they, like, like they came from them. So, I mean, we, we, we shouldn't go into such realms because we right. really cannot determine how human beings will react you know, when faced with a situation like this. Even people that have biological children sometimes treat them cruelly. I mean, they, we, we've seen situations like that even in this country where babies are treated to death by their own biological parents. Okay. So I mean, well, adopted <laughs> children are treated like, you know, they came from the loins of people taking care of them. Right. So that's, I, 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 I don't think carrying okay. a baby should, because I'm not carrying a baby to be a, to, right. to be a, a hindrance right. to being a good parent. Okay, mm -hmm. let me come back yeah. to Gift. Gift, are you still there? Hello, Gift. Please. Gift, yes. Oh, Let me okay. ask you this question, Gift. What would it take for you to give up this children to this family? Are you still interested in doing that? Or are you still interested in giving up these children at some point? Can you hear me, Gift? Hello, Gift? Oh, Ooh, I think I'm disconnected. Oh, we lost Gift. Let's try to reconnect with Gift. Let me get, Gift. Uh, come yeah. back to the doctor. There's a question. Dr. Ajayi? Yes. Dr. Ajayi, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, Ace is asking on Twitter. Yeah. 
Please, what's the average expense to carry out a surrogacy, like an estimate and, or an average? It varies from, because sometimes the agencies are determining how much they will pay at the end of the day, you know? But um, realistically speaking, it can be up. 1.5 million. Do you hear that? Um, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, no, it's now it's as well. Yeah, it depends on the agents, like I said. So sometimes you can get it for as low as 1.5, but there are times when the expense can go to as high as 4.5 to 5 million. Okay. You know, and sometimes that doesn't even include the um, delivery fees, antenatal fees, you know, incidentals. For example, if she falls ill during pregnancy, mm. I mean, who, 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 who settles the bill? Mm. Uh, things like that. But, I mean, we try to make sure that all those things are itemized prior to starting so that the intending parents know what they are in for. Mm. Because we cannot get to the middle and then you say you're not right. doing anymore. Doing again. <laughs> okay, so what thank, thank you, Doc. Yes. Mm. Yeah. You know, uh, you know uh, we know of cases where people are pregnant and in the course of the pregnancy or childbirth, they lose their lives. So this is a serious, as much as a lot of people will make it about money, it's also a serious sacrifice for someone to do that. I mean, we are mothers here, we know yeah. what it, it took yeah. us. And, you know, Nima's case, she was in hospital for uh, on bed Very rest months. for months. Yeah. So just that she even went through that, isn't that enough um, reason to want to compensate her for the process Very of well. having those children? I, I agree. I mean, she should, she should be paid something. But she, I mean, if they promised to give her an education, and I mean, even though it wasn't written in black and white, they should go ahead and do what is, they can for her. Because, I mean, putting your life on the line, for to carry to carry a pregnancy for you is is, is, is no small sacrifice, oh. and she should be commended for that. I mean, she, she wasn't given anything to start with. Some other people will not start until you give them money. Doctor, so, okay, uh, really but, Nima, let me pause what, you for a second. Uh, I'm told that gift yeah. is back. Gifts, are you there? Oh. Yes. Thank you for for joining us again. I want to ask you this question: um, Are you still willing to give up this children to this family? And if you are, what I what what would it take? to give up the twins for, to this family? Okay, like I was saying, money is not my problem at this point. Like, initially, I never discussed about money, and till now, I'm still not talking about money. Good. So, uh, it's not going to take me anything. The thing is, I'm keeping back the children, considering the fact that they belong to me, and the whole character, the way she treated me, the you emotional like torture, the whole abuse, the, the way, like, even the way she treats my cousin, which are her children, because she has her own five biological children, and she doesn't take care of them, oh. is that she abandoned them to marry another man. I never knew all of this, because I was staying with her, actually, but we just talk, and we didn't live in the same house until all of this started happening, and the children started asking me, that I couldn't have been this victim to their mom because mm. their mother is terrible to them and they cannot possibly wow. Let me her. play the devil's advocate a so, bit, a gift. Do you yes. think it's fair to carry somebody else's... I don't understand uh, no, this question. Wait. Wait. Don't ask it. It's a sperm. No, the, 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 sperm it. the sperm doesn't belong to your... Because you're now married to your own husband. The sperm it's doesn't right. belong to your own husband. It belongs mm. to your auntie's husband. So my question is, do you think it's therefore fair to keep the student without their consent? My children. Well, I cannot really say for sure that this plan belongs to. I think I demand to get at, at least a paternity test to be sure because they are <laughs> all the <laughs> characters and they can do it. <laughs> they get what they want. I can't really be sure here. because nobody, no man will leave his or her child, considering the fact that like had an intimacy or anything. This was just, a, I went through something <laughs> and this was smiling. done. Then at the end of the day, they abandoned me and they were still threatening my life to do things, evil things to me. When I was carrying, okay, a so called child, if the man's sound like he's claiming. So there's no man, like no sensible man would leave a child for that long. They left mm. me as early as 14 weeks and I took care of myself mm. from that stage to when I did birth. And these children are one week to six months. Mm. And all of a sudden, they are coming back to lay claim of the children mm. because they know my dad is dead and they are threatening me to come to my dad's area to come and disorganize people, to call police, to arrest me, that I've been in jail, that I'm a kidnapper and all of that. They've been tagging my name and they've said all sorts of things. So I must get a paternity test right. to be sure. Okay, let me, let me, so let me go ahead. Okay. Okay. So for now, sure. because the woman is like you here, that the husband is not fed out, mm. okay. he's pregnant a woman. So if that is done, I can't really say for sure, but I'm okay, not gifts. giving back. My son reminds the fact that I'm not giving back my children.
Gifts, hang in there, please. On, please. Yeah. You have mentioned that they are threatening you. Are you planning to take this to court yourself? Do you have that plan? Hello? To take the matter to court, to protect yourself and your children? Do you have that plan? Yes, if it takes, if I have to do that to protect my children. Mm. Okay, let me. They are really threatening oh, my life, and I even went as far as hiding because they've been sending people to monitor us, they sent people to kidnap us, but it didn't work. Mm. So we get to know what was happening. So I'm in a hiding place, like I'm hiding to cover myself right now. Mm. So if that's what right. it takes for me to protect my children, I don't mind taking it to court. All right, let me come to Mrs. Fashion Laura. Um, lawyer, are you still there, madam? Hello? Mrs. Fashion Laura, you there. Very good. Let me ask you this question. And as I said, okay. as my job as yeah. a moderator, I have to play the devil's advocate sometimes. So, now, I, if I'm the father, it's my sperm that was used. <laughs> and I am an American citizen. Yeah. So my children are American citizens. And I can actually lay claims to them because they are my children. So if I'm an American citizen, can I therefore go through the embassy to demand that my children be taken to the... Because if you, if you, if you can prove that you are better capable of taking care of these children, um, is it, would they give the children to me as an American citizen? You will carry your wife along, <laughs> which is the mother of the children. <laughs> um, okay, so if he goes to the embassy and says he wants to collect the kids, on what basis? Because he's an American citizen. Because they are So they will take the kids away from the from mother. Mother. Because it's the so blood. They they the that's his blood. Mm. That's, that's his so own. They will take. Go ahead. It's his own blood. Mm. Well, it's the woman's blood as well. Yes. It's the woman's blood. These things are not... These things are not the way um, we, we think they are a lot of times. And um, if I'm not mistaken, I think um, the consent of a mother is usually um, very sacrosanct a lot of times. So I really do not understand. Even in America, I think, yes, even in this America we're talking about, this, these kids are minor, they are infants. Yes. So I really do not even think that they would listen to the father say, because I'm an American citizen, I want to take the kids. I think the, I think children are legally, I think they are um, best kept with their mothers. Mm -hmm. The only reason is if the woman is not stable, like right. I said, right. if she has proven not to be, not to be a, a good mother, Mm. If she's not going to be a good mother, well, yes, that's um, that's the uh, right. Okay, that's a, let me get um, Nima to jump in here. I want to ask the doctor, Doctor Ajayi, Doctor Ajayi, because uh, this is of yes. course your area of uh, practice. Have you ever seen a situation where the birth of a child caused the surrogate mother her womb, mm. and does this in any way change the terms of agreement? So mm. let's assume. That the, the cost that was, you know, pegged, it was pegged at five million. That's the maximum you talked about now. And now she's lost her womb. Can she then change the, the cost and say, because I have lost something that, could, my, you know, for a life I can never have other children, this will cost higher or even, you know, cost the children? Uh, well, fortunately, I've, I've not been faced with such a situation. Mm. But uh, like I said, things like that happen. Mm. And um, some surrogates have lost their lives in the process. I mean, they, I mean, there are several situations like that. Yeah. And I mean, the, the agreement usually sometimes specifies, you know, for things like this. And they usually will put a fee to how much you will get That's if true. anything happens no while you are pregnant. You know, and even I mean, some 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 agreements even go as far as you know, um, compensating the family mm. in case something happens to the case of that with surrogates mm. while pregnant. So do those things are usually spelled out um, in the agreement, and, and good lawyers usually not draft this. Mm -hmm. I don't have a figure, but I mean, there there are there are ways that compensation is given to those surrogates. Right. So if they have to have cesarean section, for example. Which is not uh, vaginal delivery. Yeah. They get paid a bit more. Uh, if they are having triplets, uh, twins, they get paid a bit more. You know, things like that are put in place to protect their interests. Okay. Okay. So uh, it's it's possible that if anything like that happens to that to her, she will get compensated. Okay. Even okay. if she has a good uh, agreement to play. Okay. Right. So my my question now is to the lawyer. Now, if Gib decides that she's going to hold on to her children. Does she still yes. have? Do, would she still have any rights or to, let's say, child support from that family? Because would she also still get the initial 
compensation, agreed compensation that they had. See, you keep saying the initial agreed compensation. That was not documented. Okay. So we're going to be going back and forth. I said this, they said this, they didn't do this, they did that, they didn't do this. But okay. of course, yeah. because now that woman and the man, they have children together. It is yeah. compulsory that they take care of these kids. The, 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 the law is not interested in what the man said or what the woman did. The law is interested in the children. Mm. That is all. That is all. The, the two of them must come together. And when I say the two of them, I'm not even considering the aunt in this situation. She's not even in, she's not, she's not a part of this, this conversation that I'm talking about. I'm talking about the woman that carries the child and the man that fathers these children. Mm. So they have to come together and tell these kids will be taken care of. Wow. That's okay. just my own submission. Let, Let me child. come to gift. Yes, the, the law is not interested in yes. The law, is not interested. the law is not interested in the politics and, and all the going right. on, the shenanigans. No, because the law is not interested in this. Right. The law is interested in the children. Right, okay. And Let if me come. they cannot get their act together, if they cannot get their act together, you will be shocked. Somebody will fight, fight something to take the kids away for proper care. Let me come to Gift. Gift, are you there? Yes, I'm here. How is your own husband taking all of this? What's his own input into all of this? Okay, like I already said, they are they are threatening our no, life. No, I'm talking about and your own husband. I'm calling the well-meaning Nigerians to look into the matter and help me get justice. Because Dr. Sheila Munyemobi and the husband, Professor Gamelia Munyemobi, they are really threatening our lives. They want my husband. They thought mm. my husband to never be proud. He got married to me, and that was all he did. So they, they, the, way, the, the way everything is going is really getting out of hand. So that's why we are involving the, everyone to know about it, just in case anything happens. Because the threat is too much. The threat is too much on our lives. When you say yeah, threat, could you kindly tell me what exactly you mean by threat? You said they wanted to come to your father's bearer to embarrass you. What other threats are we talking about yes, here? He said the children, they told other people that they are getting us, they, they, are, they wrote a petition against us to get jobs for me, and that we are kidnappers, and that we are requesting for ransom so we help their children. So all of that, they, they did. All right. And another person told me, she told us, okay, she wants to get me arrested, that I will be in the police station while they take away my children. And they've also sent people to kidnap us, actually, and I have a record of it, that, but it didn't work because the person they sent actually told us about it. So we had to go hide it. So they've been doing a whole lot of things. They just right. want to do it in an illegal way. They don't want to come up. All right. And they so are making it look like as if I'm requesting for money, but the truth is I've never discussed money with them for yeah. the first time. So trying to tell me they want to compensate me is a no-no because that's not the issue. Right. The issue here is the, because the fact that they abandoned me when I needed it and been abused it, and I've gotten to realize the type of person she is. She has her children, her own children out there in the street that she doesn't even take care of. And all of a sudden, she wants to take this because she wants to understand them in her second husband part. So okay. the whole thing is just crazy. I All right, Gift, thank you very much. I'd like to end it there because um, personally, I, I really would love to speak to your aunt. I mean, we've tried to reach out to them. Uh, our producers are still working to bring her on. It would be great to hear her perspective because I don't think any sane person would want to go this approach unless there's a reason. So I'd like to hear from her yeah. and her husband on exactly what, what exactly did they agree with you and why does it look as if they are demanding for something that the law doesn't recognize as theirs. So I uh, would really love to speak to your aunts, and I, and I, and I hope that um, they would accept the, um, the request to come on our show soonest to, um, to, to respond to these allegations. I mean, these are still allegations from your end, and um, we have to hear both sides. Let me take a few comments on, on social media before we wrap up. And he says, I don't, I don't see how you can vary the terms of an agreement because an accident of God, an accident or an act of God happened. You can only make provisions for such occurrences, permanent disability at the time of drafting the agreement. Uh, Blessed Charles says she agreed to the surrogacy for a consideration. Mm -hmm. If they failed in fulfilling their obligation under the oral agreement, which is not disputed and can only be established by evidence to sponsor her education and take care of her through pregnancy, the surrogate mother has a case. Olajuji um, says the children carry the man's DNA. He must pay for the children's upkeep. Yes. The law... 
know they pity men for this kind of matter. Mm. That yeah. is why men who donate sperm do it anonymously. Okay. Uh, Priscilla mm. Ajayi says, uh, the lady is actually thinking. She sounds like someone who has thought the matter through. And there's no written document. A so-called American citizen is supposed to be wise. Okay, Femi now says, I think mm. she should get a lawyer to help her out, which I agree yeah. with. Yes. Her life and that of the twins yes. as, is as a state. Okay, we have to wrap up. Let me just let our, the, all our guests have final words. And it's still... Um, uh, our legal practitioner, I'll start with you, Mrs. Ola Jumoke, fashion lawyer. What are your final words on this as we wrap up? Okay, um, what I'll say is um, let her get a lawyer. And if she feels really threatened, let her make um, a report at um, the police station. So at least it, it will be on record that where she made a report that her, her life is being threatened. If mm -hmm. she feels, if she honestly feels like her life right. and those of her children are being threatened, then All she can right. do that. Thank you so, very much. But again, you should get a lawyer. Thank you very much, yes. Ms. Olaju Moke, fashion lawyer, for Thank joining you. us. Let me come to Dr. Fataya Jai. What are your final Thank words you. on this? Yeah, so I, I would say that I'm surrogacy in Nigeria is still in its, in its infancy, but yeah, uh, not spoil it if, if, if done right, <laughs> problems like this no, will not you. arise. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll um, urge our listeners, and I'll, I suppose I'll watch it, to always, I mean, ensure that uh, if they're ever going to go down, down that route, to be very, very careful. Yeah. Uh, thank All you right. very much. All right, thank you very much, Dr. Fat uh, Dr. Fatai uh, Jai. Let me get Gift's final words. Gift, are you still there? Oh, we lost her already. I really wanted to get her final. But as I said, we'll, we'll, it's an open invitation to our aunt. We'll definitely try to reach her. We tried to reach them, but unfortunately, we couldn't reach them. But we'll continue to reach them because I believe strongly there are always two sides to every story. So it's important to hear their own side of this story. That's all we can take on the show. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now. Okay.